again, my fellow freedom builders. This is yet another stock of the week video. My name is Hans Nielsen and I'm here to guide you in investing and into a good solid financial future. I know I said the other day that you weren't going to get any more stock of the week videos here in 2019, but I found this fantastic stock that I simply had to tell you about. The stock is Bristol Myers Squip or BMY if you're looking it up. And, um, I must admit that I am a bit amazed here. It is yet another um, pharma medical company, just like the app V we looked at the other day. And uh, as always, we are going to look through the video with some different angles on. We are going to look at the qualitative fundamentals and some basic, the numbers. We're going to look at the dividends. I know a lot of you out there are interested in dividends. And uh, here, the Bristol Myers is also uh, quite amazing. We're looking at what the insiders are doing, some price to value, some short term views, uh, and of course, the technical analysis part. If we are starting out with the qualitative fundamentals, uh, just the basic company, uh, Bristol Myers is a huge company and we're going to look at the numbers later. But something that is important here is uh, that the investors has been holding back a bit for the last couple of years, two to three years because there are something about the Bristol Myers products. They have a couple of, of large products. They have the Eliquis, uh, a blot thinner, and they have uh, something called Obdivo, which is uh, in uh, cancer immune therapy. And they have, of course, a lot of different products. But some of the products that are really heavy uh, in the revenue creating, um, they are running out within uh, some years, not right now, two or three years, but we can see in a, in a relatively near future that they are going to lose uh, the patent. It is running out so other people can start copying it. And people have been a bit worried if they could come up with some new revenue st streams. But here, just um, a, a few months ago, um, the, the Bristol Myers, they uh, had a big acquisition, or they have been telling about it most of the year, actually, and that is Celgene. And Celgene, uh, the Celgene deal just went through here a short while ago, and that has made the investors quite thrilled, to say the least. And um, the good thing about Celgene, uh, in combination with the, the Bristol Myers, is that their combination of products are... Uh, quite amazing. I'm not an expert on this area, but I have been reading uh, up a lot the, the last days here. And um, I can tell that the uh, analysis that are really into uh, this specific part of, of uh, pharmaceuticals and medics, uh, they are really, really uh, thrilled about this combination of Celgene and Bristol Myers. So that is what I am uh, leaning up against. Uh, the good thing when you are analyzing a stock is, at least today when we have the internet, is that you don't have to be an expert on all areas. So when I am researching, I am looking at a lot of different uh, sites, a lot of uh, resources that I know uh, from experience are very solid and very good at analyzing stocks. So I am leaning towards these uh, analysts' opinion and they are saying the bristol myers Celgene combination is just fantastic. So that is what I'm going with. So let's have a look at some of the fundamentals that we can actually uh, look from the platforms I am subscribing to here. We have Stockopedia. And uh, if you're new here, by the way, if you're new, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and yeah, hit everything just below the video there. Um, but the Stockopedia, if you're new to the channel, is one of my favorite um, platforms when we have to look at at the numbers and they have this ranking very quick filtering uh, rank out here that i use just to get a very very quick glance at the quality of the company and the bristol myers here uh, the quality is on a scale from 1 to 99 where 99 is the best we have a 97 which is amazing not many companies are up there the value i'm not looking too much at that i'll get back to that one later when we're looking at the fast graphs um, the momentum are great and the overall stock rank is uh, 95 as well. I would like a quality above 70 here and the stock rank also above, above 70. And both of them are in dark green. That is really, really great. 
all right let's look at some of the numbers if you are a returning viewer here i guess you kind of know what numbers i'm going to look at but here we have uh, the the 12 month forecast rolling and that here we can see that we have a pe ratio of 10.6 uh, and an estimated uh, growth in earnings per share at almost 40%. And the 10 divided by the 40 here gives us a 0.4 in PEC ratio. And the PEC ratio is telling us about how cheap or expensive we can get future growth. And um, I would like to see a PEC ratio below 2. And this is at 0.4, so there's nothing wrong with this. The dividend yield is uh, two point, uh, at least the estimated, 2.87%. I'll get back to that later, but that is very uh, good for a large cap company like this. All right. If we're going down here, we can see that um, the quality, of course, a good quality up here, the 97, comes uh, among other places from the re return on capital, return on equity, and operating margin. And all of them are... Uh, extraordinary high also compared to the overall industry and uh, to the uh, general market here so let's go down a bit further we can see that the petroski score is at a seven i promised you a video about the petroski score and it will come just in the beginning of 2020 here um, but i am preparing a, a load of different videos that you can look forward to um, so uh, I'll get back to that one later. There's also be a little New Year video here just be before New Year's Eve where I'm telling you a bit about my plans for 2020. All right, if you're looking at the graph for the total revenue, it's looking great and estimating uh, growing quite a lot in 2020. And that is, of course, because of the acquisition of uh, Salgene. Operating profits going uh, nicely up. Um, the earnings per share are looking great. Uh, if we're looking down here at the cash flow, which is one of the factors that I'm really looking into because the cash flow is how much cash they actually have on hand to spend. We can see that the operating cash flow is going quietly, uh, uh, nicely up. The capex is falling a bit and the operating cash flow minus the capex is giving us the free cash flow meaning what do we end up um, in, with money in our hand what can we spend and that one is going up very nicely as well and that is something i like to see if we're looking at the dividends and i know as i mentioned a lot of you are interested in dividends uh, not that i'm uninterested in dividends but it is not my main focus but i do like dividend growers and we can see here that the dividend has been going up uh, at a, an okay rate it is going up with two percent three percent almost three percent and so on each and every year but uh, it is estimated to grow over uh, something around 11 percent up in uh, in 2020 so that is uh, quite nice as well we can't see it here but let's just see here yeah they are estimating um a dividend here a dividend yield going up to 2.87 percent but as you know something i also really like to see is if the company has enough enough money to pay for that dividend and uh, here we can see that um, we are up just around a, a dividend cover of two meaning that they are their earnings per share is twice as high as the dividend they are paying out and that is really nice we can also see that the free cash flow there is plenty of money to pay the dividend here so they also have money left to invest in new stuff that is great uh, the net debt uh, is negative uh, that is great too and pretty much uh, all of the numbers here are looking great the interest coverage meaning how many times their their profit can pay for for the interest is great uh, there will be no problem for them to pay the interest here and the quick ratio and the current ratio is also fantastic so there's not much here that i don't like actually i like it all uh, just for the fun of it, the analyst consensus uh, is going up. Three months ago, it was a, a, around a buy and it's moving up against a strong buy here, uh, which is great. All right. If you're looking down, uh, in the uh, guru focus here, let's just do like this so you can see it a bit better. It's telling us a bit of the same. Uh, we can see here it's set up in a, in a, in a bit of a, a different way. 
uh, we can see that the financial strength is, is uh, great and the profitability rank where you can see they're calculating a profitability rank of, of all this all these numbers here is 9 out of 10 which is also fantastic if we're looking at the insiders here what are the insiders doing um, we can see that I ha there has been some buying and some selling but it is not it is not really much it's not something I would really uh, have any notice of here the insiders we can see the number of them and we can see uh, the amount they are selling the amount of, of stocks they're selling and there has been in 17 and 18 uh, 17 here there has been some quite huge selling from insiders but lately it has been really nothing that I would uh, be worried about on on the buying or the selling side so no problem there all right let's get into the fast graphs as you might remember the fast graph is where we compare the price let's just have a look here at the Bristol Myers uh, we have a look at the price compared to the, the development in the fundamentals and here in the green we have the adjusted operating earnings we can see the growth rate over all these years back from 2000 is just around six percent which is not amazing but it is of course um, because there is a long long period here where they are almost not growing at all and then uh, here in in the later years it has been really accelerating so if we're going down to or let's just see here we have the around six percent and if we're going down to the last 10 years we are up at uh, 12 and a half percent and what it is what's nice to see here is we can just zoom out again here that the price has a tendency of uh, oscillating just uh, up and down around the the normalized uh, PE ratio and the earnings here so uh, when the earnings are going flat well then the price is also flat uh, here we have a big rise in price before we had it in earnings but that happens sometimes if we're looking at the 10 year here we can see the same oscillating around these earnings and normalized PE and if you're looking at the last five years that I also like we can see that the adjusted earnings growth rate is 21% and right now we are actually quite a lot down in the green area here meaning that it would be um, it would be normal for this stock to move up uh, to be up above these numbers as well and if we're looking down here we can see some estimates of growth of uh, we have here for 99% but then 46% in, uh, in adjusted earnings for uh, 20 and 16% for 21. So if we go in here in the forecasting mode, uh, we can't see, let's just see, we have the customized here. And uh, if we are putting something like 15% in here and we put that in, we can see that the green area here, that would be uh, an, an estimated uh, earnings growth of 15% and if it keeps that for the next year we would including dividends and everything make uh, some somewhere around 26% for the next year and uh, if we are going further out 22% per year over the next two years but of course they are saying that the that the earnings could grow more so if we're going up and saying over the next couple of years the the uh, average earnings could grow with 25 percent if that is so we can see uh, and a total annual return on uh, or yeah here return uh, on on our investment on 76 percent meaning over the next couple of years we could see a couple of hundred percent of course it's also nice to see what about worst case or maybe not work worst case but what if it is lower than everybody expects well, we would still be making 14% per year over the next couple of years. What if it is actually only 5% it goes up? We would still be making money. Not a not huge amount, but that is, that is okay. If uh, the analysts are expecting above 40% in growth rate uh, in, in the earnings for, for the next year, and we are still making a profit, if it should only be 5% and of course if we are moving up towards the expected areas uh, here on, on the graph 
then I am there is a, a lot of cushion to to work with here. So I'm very comfortable, very very comfortable with uh, the potential in Bristol Myers here. If we're looking at the very short rate, uh, you know, I have the tip ranks here. And if we're looking at the uh, analyst, uh, right now it is here around the $65 and we can see, well, somebody expects it as low as 53 But you shouldn't pay too much uh, attention to this if you are a tip rank user. Because um, what you should do is that you should only pick the the uh, analyst with the best rankings, meaning the ones that are uh, hitting the most uh, right uh, in, in, in their analysis. And here we can see there are a few and they are estimating somewhere between 62 and 80. And the latest one is the 80 here. And um, that gives me a lot of comfort as well. The overall stock analysis, that is a bit short term here, but we can see they are scoring 8 out of 10, which is great. Uh, the analysis rating is a moderate buy. Um, blogger opinion is bullish. Hedge fund has increased their activity. The insiders, I would show, have sold some shares, but I'm not concerned about that. Tip ranks investors positive. New sentiment positive. Technicals and fundamentals are positive. So uh, 8 out of 10, that is great. So let's just uh, finish off with the technical analysis. And if we look at the technical analysis, there is a bit of... Um, well, if you look at this one, we can see that pretty much since somewhere in 2015, the stock has been moving sideways. We have not been making money, really, if we had been a buy and hold investor. We could have gone in here in in the summer of 15. And now uh, when we are close to entering 2020, we would have made zero percentage on our money. And that is one of the reasons why I'm not just a buy and hold investor so what i'm looking for is i'm looking for the rsi here to be above 50 on a weekly chart that every one of these bars is a, an entire week of, of uh, stock data here and i'm looking at this to be above 50 meaning that we are in an uptrend but i also only want to be in stocks that are outperforming the entire market and this indicator i know it is uh, it can be a bit hard to grasp just uh, when i explain it quickly but this gray line is actually showing if the bristol myers stock is moving faster upwards or downwards than the entire market so in this period where we could see that the bristol myers is actually moving sideways we see here let me just draw it here here we see the Bristol Myers moving sideways, but at the same time we see this relative, uh, compared to relative strength indicator moving downwards. And that is of course because the entire market for 2019 has been going up. So having a stock uh, that is only moving sideways is actually the same as having a loss. It is losing momentum towards the overall market. I hope that makes sense. I will make a bunch of videos about this in 2020. So hang on to this channel. I am giving you an entire series about this entire method. That is actually one of the reasons that I am a long term profitable. So what we can see here is that just around here we're getting a good buy signal but i am a look i'm a i am looking a bit more uh, at the technicals um besides just this indicator because i'm also looking at that we here have a, a trend line moving down we could also put a regression channel on that's also something i will tell you more about but that is a statistical tool that you can use um, that is um, taking a, a regression line and having a couple of standard deviation on each side here. But here the price moves up both up uh, through the, the regression line and also up through my trend line. Uh, what I do like to see then is I do like to see a little retracement. So those of you that has been follow, uh, have been following me on the Danish channel as well, you know this, that I like the break. Then I like a little retracement and I like a move up. And that is where we are now. I cannot guarantee that we should not have a little retracement more, but I am confident that over the next year we will be seeing an upwards, uh, an upward movement here. If we are looking a bit longer back, you could argue 
that there are some uh, resistance areas here. It could be here and it could be uh, somewhere here. But I must admit that with the fundamentals I'm seeing, I'm not extremely worried about these. I saw the break here, which I'm satisfied about, and these single tops are not really something that concerns me. Um, if there were a lot extra, if we had been seeing uh, several spikes up here to this area with a lot of volume, I would be concerned and I would wait until this area had been broken at a retracement and then a set up here. But as I see it now, um, I don't really see that these uh, areas should be strong enough uh, resistance so that the stock couldn't go through them. We are in what I call a green zone here. Uh, with the two indicators in the right place. We have all the fundamentals. We have the fast graph. We have the uh, the short term from the tip ranks. We have uh, all the, the analysts that are they're saying more and more and more of them are, are recommending a strong buy. There's actually not really anything here that I don't like. And for you out there that are dividend investors, there is a rising dividend and they are in 2020 estimating that it will go up a with above uh, above 11% in growth, so that we're getting close to 3% per year here. And um, with the closing of the deal with Celgene, the acquisition there, um, and the very good product portfolio we see, there's not really many concerns I have about this stock. I can't tell you that when we turn in 2020 here, and we're just starting a new uh, stock investing year, I am quite confident that the Bristol Myers will be one of the stocks that will be added to my portfolio quite quickly. Just remember, I am not a stock advisor. This is not buy or sell recommendation. You should always, always do your own analysis. But I hope you can get some inspiration from my here. And uh, more than an analysis, I hope it is also some sort of an educational uh, venture here so that you can actually get some um, some educational points and some inspiration as to how to build your own analysis methods. So Bristol Myers will probably be in my portfolio in the new year. It's not there yet, but uh, I am, as you can hear, very positive toward it. All right, that's all for now. Um, that this will be, I can tell you, the last stock of the week video. If you haven't liked the video and subscribed to the channel already, please do so. That it means a lot to me. And uh, it tells YouTube that you would like to see a lot more of these videos and that my content is important. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon, once more before New Year, with a little status update uh, and with a lot of information as to what you can expect from this channel in 2020. It will be an exciting journey, I can tell you. This is Hans signing off for now. I'll talk to you soon. Take care of your money out there. Bye.